Aloha family, my name is Dominic and on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Mike and Lisa Kai, welcome to Deep Dive. From wherever you are joining us from around the world, we are so glad that you are with us today. And if you did not have an opportunity this past weekend to participate in the tithes and offering, I would love to give you an opportunity now. Our scripture reading is Leviticus 2730, which says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If you've been attending or watching Inspire Online for any length of time, you probably know that the tithe is a tenth of our increase or income. Generosity is everything we give above and beyond the tithe. It is important to note that we don't give the tithe, but we bring the tithe because we are bringing back to the Lord what is already His. Also, God requires the first tenth of our increase, not the leftovers, but the very best part. And because he should be first in our lives, the first of our increase should be set apart or made holy for him. And why do we do this? We do it as an act of obedience, faith, trust, and honor, knowing that if we are faithful with bringing him back the tithe, there will be a blessing attached to it. So as we honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings today, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you all honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithe back to you as an act of honor, obedience, and faith. God, we ask that you would bless it and use it for your edification. And we also ask that you would bless our offerings, God, that they might come back to us 30, 60, and 100 fold. God, we thank you for all you're doing, and we give you all the honor, glory, and praise in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Family, if you look on the screen, you can see all the various ways that you can give. But now I certainly hope that you are ready to get down to our discussion for today. This past weekend, we had the privilege of hearing a powerful sermon from Pastor Dudley Rutherford, the senior pastor of Shepherd Church in Los Angeles, California. His sermon was entitled, The Name of Jesus. And in the event you missed it, you can go to our YouTube channel where you can watch this sermon or any other sermons you may have missed. Now, I have to say, I loved this message. I love the backstory behind the message and the, and the fun and insightful and inspiring way he talked about the magnificence of the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his message, he discussed seven <laughs> observations or aspects about the name of Jesus. First, the name of Jesus is a name of supreme simplicity. The name is easy to remember, easy to spell, and easy to pronounce, unlike other names in the Bible like Mechilzedek or Mephibosheth and so on. Second, it is the name of unmatched beauty and strength. Unlike names that are comical or sound dangerous like Kang the Conqueror, that's for all my Marvel fans out there, or Conan the Barbarian, the name of Jesus is beautiful yet powerful all at the same time. Third, it is a name that has absolutely no equal. One person may say Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, like our senior pastor, Pastor Mike. But another may say LeBron James is the greatest. One person may say Michael Jackson is the greatest performer. Others might say it was Prince. There is always someone to which even the greats can be compared to. But in the case of Jesus, there is absolutely no comparison. There is no one to which he can be compared, matched, or equaled. Jesus stands in a class completely by himself. The fourth observation that Pastor Dudley made is that his name is indescribable. You know, Pastor Dudley went through almost the entire alphabet, listing all the names the various authors of the Bible used to describe Jesus. The problem for all of them is that words could never do him justice. There were simply no words that could adequately describe the person of Jesus and all that he was, is, and will be. 
The fifth point is that the name of Jesus is the name above all names. There is no name greater, higher, or more majestic than the name of Jesus. His sixth point is that the name of Jesus is the name of salvation. The Bible says that Jesus is the only name by which we can and must be saved. There is no other name in all of human history that has a power to save other than the name of Jesus. The seventh and final observation was that everyone, without exception, will at some point confess the name of Jesus as Lord. Now, for the purpose of today's deep dive, I want to focus on point six. The name of Jesus is the name of salvation. And to guide our discussion today, I would like to invite you to open your Bibles to Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, since you would give our honor, glory, and praise for you alone are worthy. God, I just thank you for this opportunity to share and speak with your people from wherever they may be watching. God, we're just so thankful for the name of Jesus. And God, as I speak, I pray that it would be a word from heaven. Please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive the revelation you have for us today. And we ask this in the mighty name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you believe me if I told you that you, me, and everyone watching right now has been infected with a terminal disease? Now, it's not the result of a bug bite or eating contaminated foods or some type of bioweapon. It is something that has been passed down from generation to generation since the beginning of time. This disease has a 100% mortality rate and no modern medicine or science has the ability to cure it. It negatively affects every part of our existence from the way we think, the way we speak, and the way we act. In fact, this disease is so lethal that it not only destroys our physical bodies, it can destroy our very souls as well. Now, this probably sounds pretty scary. It probably sounds like something from a horror movie. But what's really scary about what I'm saying is that I'm not making it up. It's not a hypothetical. I'm describing a very real condition that has affected every human being that has ever lived and will continue to do so. Now, if you're wondering, well, Pastor Dom, what disease could be this sinister, this evil? Well, I'll tell you. This disease is called sin, and all of us have been infected with it from birth. But I've got some really good news, and that news is this. Thankfully, there is a cure, and that cure is the blood of Jesus. Now, it is only because of Jesus who lived a perfect and sinless life, who willingly died a sinner's death on the cross and allowed his divine blood to be shed so our sin condition could be cured. And all we have to do is willingly receive that cure. Now, I'm not the altar call just yet, but my point is simply this. No one else in human history has done this because no one else could do this. No one else has lived a perfect, sinless life except one. And that is why salvation comes through one name and one name alone. And that name is the name Jesus. Now, some of you watching may be thinking to yourself, well, like, that's all good, but I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. 
And you know, by human standards, that may very well be true. But I really know, well, I'm sorry, and I really just appreciate and love the way Pastor Dudley addressed this during his sermon. You know, during his sermon, he asked everyone in the congregation if we had ever lied, if we had ever stolen, or if we have ever gossiped. And if we answered any of these questions with yes, regardless of the magnitude of the lie or the, or the frequency of the occurrence, we all qualified as sinners. So then what is sin exactly? Well, simply put, it is rebellion against God. God tells us to do something and we don't do it or God tells us not to do something and we do it. It is us choosing our own way over his. So when we take all these things into consideration, then I can't help but ask myself the question, well, then why would Jesus willingly shed his blood for someone like me or for us? I mean, when we consider all the bad things we've done and all the mistakes we've made, what would possibly motivate Jesus to do such a thing? What would possibly motivate God to, to, volunt- to send his very own son, his only son, to die for us? Well, interestingly enough, the answer is simple, at, or at least for God it is. And that answer is love. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's because he loves us with the love that is immeasurable. And if I'm being honest, at times, even incomprehensible. But to get a better understanding of how he loves us, let us look at Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. In verse 6, it says, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, the Bible says that we were powerless. Now, when it's speaking of the term powerless, it speaks more to our moral frailty than our physical weakness. In other words, we had no ability to live a righteous life or to make ourselves right with God. We were destined for eternal separation from God, and there was absolutely nothing we could do about it in our own efforts. No amount of good deeds, no amount of I'm sorry's, or no amount of money could save us. But the verse says that at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, the Greek word for ungodly is a word called asebes, which means irreverent and pious or wicked. And this word described the condition of all humanity to include us. But while we didn't know God, acknowledge God, fear God, honor God, obey God, or seek God, Jesus still died for all of us. And when you think about it, like, how crazy is that? To willingly lay down your life for people who didn't even honor or acknowledge you. To, to, to do the ultimate act of love for people who don't even love you back. But that's what Jesus did. And no one else can ever boast that they were willing or able to do the same. You know, in fact, in verse 7, the Bible describes situations where, you know, someone may consider dying for someone else. In verse 7, it says that very rarely would someone do it for a righteous person. So very rarely would somebody die for a righteous person. So just to be clear, in a right, a righteous person in this context is not someone who is necessarily righteous with God. When this passage speaks of a righteous person, it's, it's speaking of someone who's living meets the letter of the law. They successfully color within the lines and follow all the rules. And in this case, the Bible says that it is very rare to find someone who would be willing to lay down their life for a righteous person. But verse 7 doesn't stop there. It kind of ups the ante a little bit and proceeds to talk about a good person. And I had to read this verse a couple of times because at first I would 
think that a righteous person was better than a good person, but it was actually the other way around. And a good person is someone who kind of goes above and beyond what the righteous person does. They are, you know, they're, they're, they're more giving, not because, not because they're trying to meet the letter of the law. It's because, because that's just who they are. They might be more giving or generous or kind or warm. You know, when you think about them, you have warm feelings about who they are. And, you know, if we're all being, I mean, I'm sure that we all know people that we think are good people. We think they're good people because they're kind, because they love others, because they're generous, because they volunteer their efforts, because, uh, because of various different reasons. So I'm sure we all know people that we think are good. And although someone dying for a good man is more likely than someone dying for a righteous man, the Bible says that even still, that's only a possibility. So think about this for just a second when we look at ourselves in comparison to Jesus. You know, I think that all of us probably have people in our lives that if the circumstances warranted, we would lay down our lives for them or at least consider it. I would venture to say that most of us would probably lay down our lives for our spouse, our children, um, our parents, perhaps a close friend. But what if it was a stranger, someone you didn't know? What about that person who cut you off on the freeway? Or what if it was that coworker who always takes credit for your work? What if it was someone who disrespected you or betrayed you or someone who harmed someone you love? Would you be willing to lay down your life for them? And if we're all being really honest, many of us, most of us would probably say no. But that's exactly what Jesus did. He died to save those who cursed him, those who falsely accused him, those who beat him, those who denied him, even those who nailed him to the cross. Verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get our acts together or for us to get our lives in order. He didn't wait for us to stop or overcome our addictions or our sinful habits. But just at the right time, Jesus laid down his life for us, not for what we would do for him, but simply because he loved us. He laid down his life so we could pick up ours. So based on this, I have not three points, simply one point to present to you today. And it's very straightforward and it is simply this. Surrender your life to Jesus and make him your Lord and Savior, because there is no other name by which we must or can be saved. Jesus is the only one who can save us from this eternally lethal and otherwise incurable disease called sin. Nothing else. That is it. Now, perhaps you have put your faith in other things, other religions, money, people, or even yourself. But none of these things can save us from the consequences of our sins. Listen, Jesus died so we could be made right with God. So all the mistakes we have made in the past, all the stinking thinking we've had, all the ways perhaps we have hurt others or even ourselves, Jesus died so all that can be wiped clean and we could be made right with a loving father. So family, you might have came onto this, uh, you might have come onto to watching Deep Dive one way. You may have come on here still dying because of your sins, still, still on this path towards eternal death because of your sins. But don't stay sick if you don't have to stay sick. And you don't because the cure is available to you today. And that cure is Jesus. 
So today, family, if you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, then please pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. God, I admit that I have made mistakes and I have done things that have hurt you and hurt others. Please forgive me of my sins. Make me right with you. Cure me of this disease called sin. And Father, today I declare that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. You are my Father. I am your child. Holy Spirit, come and live on the inside of me. Be my friend, be my comforter, be my counselor, and be my strength. Help me to follow Jesus all the days of my life. And I give you all the honor, glory, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Family, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations on making the very best decision you will ever make in your eternity. And listen, understand this. Everything now changes. The old is passing away and the new is becoming. So listen, if you made the decision, let us know because we want to come alongside of you. So just drop it in the chat. Let us know that you made the decision to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And one of our amazing Dream Team members would love to reach out to you and help you with your next steps in this faith journey. Well, family, that's all I've got for today. Again, my name is Dominic. Thank you so much for joining us for Deep Dive. Have an amazing rest of your day. God bless.